Hello everyone, my name is Lippi Saxena and I have chosen to present crowdsourcing for branding. As per the definition, according to Hobby 2006, crowdsourcing is the act of a company or institution taking a function once performed by employees and outsourcing it to an undefined and generally large network of people in the form of an open call. Basically, they are saying that instead of just using the internal employees of the company, the uh, decisions are uh, left to the outside uh, people uh, which form the crowd. The concept is quite straightforward, uh, like several bits of information are coming in from different people who are interested in giving their ideas and views. And this uh, concept has come from the basically the creative background where it means that two heads are better than one and three are better than two and so on. So basically in creative dis and designing uh, domain, they say that uh, what you are going to present is uh, not that good what two people can come up with their create creativity and that ca if that can be merged. This information is then organized to get to a meaningful, effective and better ideas as a solution. The, the, when, when, when you start crowds, when you start getting inputs from crowdsourcing, uh, then you have lot of information and this lot of information really has to be managed properly in order to get an effective solution. The model for any crowdsourcing is very general like any company or industry or any sorry any company or any organization which want the people to contribute they make an open announcement. Now these open announcements could be in form of like some competitions or just uh, uh, asking people to weigh in their ideas. And this is also known as the problem element diffusion. Now there are a lot of people, a uh, lot of people interested in the companies and also their products. And mostly because of this digital era where everybody is online and on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter and etc and etc uh, and Amazon like where people have got a lot of reviews for each and every product so basically there is a community of users who are ready to provide ideas and now uh, whatever ideas are provided by the users these are definitely have to be organized and reach to a single meaningful idea. The most important takeaway from this part is that uh, it is really not an easy task to manage all the various kinds of information because the population from where the information is coming from is not the same. You can have very high quality of ideas, you can have very low quality of ideas, you can have very diverse kind of ideas, their perceptions, their concepts, their understanding. So, like there, you, the company can be overwhelmed by their ideas, but still they need to reach a single meaningful uh, solution for what they really have to work hard to come up with a single one, which really show that they have... Uh, uh, valued the customers or the users uh, um, ideas. The benefits of crowdsourcing are is that it is really fast and it is cheap. You don't have to really pay anything and now it can be done. It's damn easy to get it done online. You just have to post it on a Facebook or a LinkedIn or send mass emails to all your uh, consumers. It improves the brand perception because it gives the idea of uh, uh, idea that the a company is uh, 
the considering and is ready to take the consumer's input the customer is engaged in decision making which could lead to customer loyalty this is also very important like the customer thinks that okay i can make a decision i can give some ideas and probably this idea will be valued so it could lead to customer loyalty this is another very good way to get feedback from customer rather than having them just fill surveys the surveys idea have been there for long just handing over like in marketing research this is one of the major uh, method to get inputs from the users or the audience and this is really bugging and it takes time so one way to get uh, feedback from customer can be uh, getting ideas through crowdsourcing also so uh, basically the customers can whatever ideas they give for any particular uh, thing like for brand ideas then those can be basically taken as ideas as as the whole for the company on various other domains also and this this data can be used for marketing research purposes like what customers really think about there are some negatives or the drawbacks of crowdsourcing uh, like customers they lack information on company's policies strategies and goals and ending up in negative effects uh, like in particular to the branding when it comes to they have been uh, examples of gap and tropicana where customers consumers were so attached to the old brand that they actually never gave a honest chance to the new initiative uh, i will ex- i will go in deep with the gap case uh, see how uh, the customers had customers really didn't agree with the latest idea using the crowdsourcing for branding which they used uh, some other usage of an examples of crowdsourcing have been it has been used in like graphic design industry for brands since 2005 uh, now uh, basically the importance of crowdsourcing in brands is relatively uh, leaning towards the art and creativity because it has nothing to do with like maths or functions like people need to study or something but creativity and innovation which is really comes from inside of people and they are like it is so prompt that it has been mostly and widely accepted in graphic design industry um there there is another side world for brains.com which is a smart sourced consulting think tank which lets people contribute and solve the problems another website is at 99 designs and they do use it a lot and as as compared to like paying a uh, 10000 Uh, dollars to an outsourcing company they just came up with new and innovative design concepts in less than 500 dollars so you can see like uh, how it is very very useful in cre- creating brands or logos for companies because uh, a lot of creativity and ideas can be gathered from the people out there on the internet This was the gap case where uh, uh, if you see there are two logos the before and the after before one has a blue box and the after is the gap with a question mark and this new logo was introduced in October 2010 and the moment it was introduced within a day or i rather less than a day like few hours there were lot of negative feedback posted on all online forums including facebook and the gap website with comments and um uh, uh comments and basically dislike for the new gap logo and this was so uh, overwhelming response that the gap company immediately decided that the new logo will be scrapped 
so this is the basically power of crowdsourcing when you really have a new uh, innovative uh, brand in place and you get a lot of ideas that you, what whether it has been accepted or not this you can say basically is uh, um, from the company's perspective it is a positive thing because they did not continue with the um, with the disliked logo and this definitely and they listen to the customers input so basically they gave leverage to the customers and the customers were satisfied but also if you see the crowdsourcing the negative of crowdsourcing as a concept this is what it is that because the people or the uh, online community or the users they didn't actually know about the background or the concept why the gap logo is changed and whatever whatever the strategic decision behind it is so they didn't have any clue and hence they just they didn't like the design and they didn't like the logo which hence was discontinued uh, so these are my references which uh, uh, which give you some more details about the out crowdsourcing for branding and thank you so much